my name is Lindy. Hello, my name is Lindy Sherries, and I used to be a Sangoma. In this channel, I talk about everything, guys. Abogorobela, the secrets that we were taught not to share with you guys, how we used to trick you guys, the spirits, how everything works when you go to a Sangoma for consultation. Yamatambo. So, whether you believe in God or don't believe in God, please check out this channel so we can talk about it. If you believe in God, let's share the gospel. If you don't believe in God, you can check out the channel too. I want to hear your opinion, and I want people who actually really share their opinion not insulting me without saying why thank you and i'll see you on my channel yes and meanwhile welcome to my channel my name is solomon Nizangi shams so good to be with you i hope you are doing very well thank you so much for watching whether you're watching live or you're watching later on on youtube welcome if you're here for the first time i put the red carpet for you welcome to a platform where we get to discuss a lot of issues that uh, is uh, related to the church, where we investigate issues, we expose charlatans, blackmailers, and we try to ask ourselves, how do we really work with God? That's the most important part of it. So please feel free to check out a lot of the videos that we've made over time and make sure you also subscribe to the channel. That's important. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. Or I, you know, really want to know where you guys are watching from. Yeah, we have a uh, Fanta Sanko all the way from Freetown, Sierra Leone. Good to have you here, Bongani. Uh, good to have you here, and all the Bereans. Tervis watching from the, the state of uh, Penn State, Pennsylvania. Uh, good to have you here. Good to have you here, Muna, all the way from Cameroon. Uh, awesome, awesome. Good to have all of you guys here. So I want to look at just a very sad issue that happened yesterday. Uh, but then the issue actually left me with a lot of question marks, isn't it? it left me with uh, just quite a lot of question marks. Uh, and it's... A church was robbed, right? So around quarter past 11 in the morning, church service was going on. Then there's about, is it four or five? Armed robbers came with guns, with masks, came in and they didn't do anything. They didn't hurt anybody, but I think they knew what they wanted. They went straight to the pastor, Bishop Lamon, and they took his jewelries they went to his wife took us and took a few other church members right so the fact that they went straight to the pastor they knew he is dressed very expensive from his wristwatch to the chains that he was wearing and to his shoes to his belt they know his wife from her rings Everything they knew was expensive. So they knew what they wanted. And after robbing the church, it is said that what they took, within just like two minutes, what they took from people, they didn't take any cash. What they took from people, the jewelry, the rings, the chains, the whatever, was worth about $400,000. Now, this is a bishop in Brooklyn, in New York, in the U.S. Yesterday, it happened. It's sad that that happened, but then it left me with a whole other question. So you, you were dressed like this as a bishop and your wife. Just from your rings to your chains and your jewelry is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. I heard that the, the bishop is actually a controversial bishop. So let's watch the video. And then we're also going to, we want to watch the video of the robbery. And then we're also going to hear from him what actually happened. Right? So here's the video. So service going on. No, not here. Okay. Right here. So this is him preaching. You can see him all dressed. 
Look at the chain that is around his neck. Look at the rings. Look at his his hands. Now I want you to watch before I I play it because five seconds from now you're not gonna see that picture again. Look at his look at his chains. Look at his rings. That's what they came for. What you about to go through? Yo, yo. All right, right, right. So he saw them coming. Then he lied down. You can see his feet and part of his body. See them with mask. I mean, the other guy that's sitting by the side there, there's nothing you could do because if he if he moved, they're just going to hurt him, maybe. So he just seated and they're okay. If you don't do anything, you we're okay with you. We just want to take what we want to take and move on. See them? They're taking the rings. You put in the rings and the jewelry in his pockets. Simple and easy. See, the bishop is still lying down there. You can see them. It's a quick job. Two minutes in and out. He's still, you see him close to the bishop there. He's removing all his chains and everything. His jewelries. And you can see that he has a gun there. You can see that, right? Yeah. So the job is done. Came back. Left something. It's more. The job is done. They, they're gone. Part, part. So Bishop knew they left, so he came up. He went down, maybe trying to make a few phone calls. And then the other guy also started moving. There's a Bishop. Everybody is now running Helter Skelter. The Bishop's name is Lamon. He's called the Salute, the, the, the Siglium Apostoli. Lamore Whitehead, that's his name. It's sad. Then you ask yourself why they came in here. Why they came in, they didn't go look for money. No, they just went straight to certain people, stripped them of their jewelries and left and the juries they lost was about a hundred thousand dollars sorry four hundred thousand dollars that's expensive let's hear from the bishop afterwards what he had to say about the incident or um if they um were just coming for a robbery and um they were all black men <clears throat> and um, they had masks, but I can see their face. Um, and they came in and um, they uh, took all of my wife's jury and took all of my jury. Um, and, um, and then they left. However, these uh, young men didn't know that cameras were on and we know um, what car you was driving they was driving in a white Mercedes CLA Benz. We know what car you're driving in. And we also know that you switched your clothes in the car because I ran after them. When they went, when they turned the guns and went down, I ran after them. Um, and um, when I seen them across the street um, going to get in the car, I didn't have trouble with a phone call that there were speculations that there were guns in my church. And I had to have my attorney go handle that and deal with that. And I don't know if this is connected, but um, it is what it is. And um, a few weeks later today, you know, we were in church during morning service. And um, as I was preaching, I seen um, three to four 
our men come in. And I just told my church, because see, when you're a shepherd, right, you have to lead your sheep. You have to lead your sheep and you have to protect your sheep. And when I seen the armed men come in, you know, it was specifically for me. Um, it was specifically for me and, um, and of course, my wife. And when I seen them come into the sanctuary with their guns, I told everybody, get out. Everybody just get out, right? Everybody get out. I didn't know if they wanted to shoot um, the church. or um, if they um, were just coming for a robbery. And um, they were all black men <clears throat> and um, they had masks, but I can see their face. Um, and they came in and um, they uh, took all of my wife's jury and took all of my jury um, and, um, and then they left. However, these uh, young men didn't know that cameras were on and we know um what car you was driving they was driving in a white mercedes cla benz we know what car you're driving in and we also know that you switched your clothes in the car because i ran after them when they went when they turned the guns and went down i ran after them um and um when i seen them across the street um going to get in the car i didn't I went, I told them to get my car keys and I drove to run after them. Lo and behold to me, I had drove by them, but we know that they changed clothes and they took the masses off. So, um, I'm going to be straight with you guys, right? Everybody that know me from the streets, y'all know who I am. And if you have any. Okay. So let me play you the video again of how it happened for those of you guys who just came in late. So he's there on the floor. You can see part of his body on the floor there. So that's what happened. They targeted them and they lost a lot of jewelry. Him and his wife, about $400,000. You could see some of the stuff that he was wearing on top of his uh, pastoral clothes. You know, real expensive stuff. His rings and his chain and everything. I'm sure his wife is going to equally have that kind of stuff. And you know, black Americans, they love them jewelry, right? But for me, it's just how much, how can you wear that sort of thing to come into church? In a church, in a community where a lot of people are struggling. That's where they are. 
he can justify it if you watch the full video where he was talking. He tried to justify it and say, look, you can dress the way that you want to dress. You know, nobody should tell you how expensive you should dress. Of course, nobody should tell you that. But when you are a clergy, a pastor, or even a Christian, living in a community where there's a lot of needs, you would want to reconsider. That's why you see me, I don't celebrate all these pastors that display their cars, display their mansions, display their, their, their monies, how nicely dressed they are. In Africa, no pastor in Africa, in Africa, no pastor should, do, should be that way. In a, in a continent where we have a lot of serious poverty problems, <clears throat> Now you're busy living large and displaying all of that. <clears throat> I'm not saying don't dress, don't dress fancy. But what would Jesus do? Do you think Jesus would dress fancy and be so expensive every day when he knows that people are looking for five loaves and two small fish just to feed them? When he knows that across the road people are hungry? You think Jesus would do that? My Jesus? Mm -mm. My Jesus would relegate himself from being a multi-millionaire to being a millionaire or just being a thousandaire, if there's anything like that. Because he's going to take a large chunk of his money to help other people with it. That's what it is. He's not going to live in a mansion. He'll live in a manger. That's my kind of Jesus. It's sad what happened to this church, you know. I do not condone this in any way. But we have to watch our ways too. We have to draw different sort of lessons from these incidences. God bless you. Please make sure you subscribe. I'll catch you again later.